Ladies and gentlemen, I am supposed to be on a call right now with Datamass. We do it every Saturday. However, I am feeling, eh, we got a storm passing through, so it usually affects me. And it's been affecting me for the last couple of days because this storm that's been passing through was supposed to bring an atmospheric river. While I was asleep last evening, all I could see was, well, all I could hear was the rain pitter-pattering on the roof. And it was coming down pretty good. We had uh, flash flood warnings in the area, and I could see why, because it lasted for hours. Not usual for this area. So, it affects my energy. While I was affecting my energy, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what I've been working on. I just did a video, and that video, literally, I'm recording over it. But I just did another video for Datamass, a Datamass update. And now I'm doing this video. So give me one second. I got to check on something. Let me uh, check on that while I got y'all here. Come on now. Shape up. Oh, it's going to make me do the shaping and the upping. Yep, there's the Datamass update. That video will be up shortly. So that video, I talked about the Pacer document. What's that? What? My Pacer document, sir. The one right here, this Pacer document. You know, where Pacers say that they don't report to the consumer reporting bureaus? Well, in that video, I told people, I said, hey, guys, guess what? What you don't realize is that all of the aliases you see on your credit report, that comes from Pacer. That comes from public records. Hold on. How do they associate aliases with you? <laughs> How do they verify that that was your alias? Did you ever tell them, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. You see, what happens is, the law requires due process. Certain things cannot be done without due process of law. So I'm going to tell you, I want y'all to pay attention. Nobody does this. No one. And I'm going to do it for you guys. This document right here that has the PACER document that this is all me. I'm the one who put PACER in a position that they had to respond to me this way. And you notice, I want you to pay attention. This is short and sweet, short, simple statements. This was done by an attorney. This was not done by some representative of PACER. That's why there is no signature on here. This was done by an attorney. Why? Because we notified them that we're getting ready to take you fools to court. Y'all want to sit up here and report to the credit reporting bureaus? Under what authority are you reporting information? Where did you get the certified record? I want to see proof of a certified record. I want to see proof of the official record that you use to report to the credit reporting bureaus. How dare you sit up here and report anything regarding any of our clients to the credit reporting bureaus. They have received hundreds of these letters because that's what my people, the ones who are working for our clients has been doing. Well, they're gonna be sending out this letter too. This letter? This letter. Pay attention. Won't be going to PACER. This will be going to the credit reporting bureau. See this right here? Credit reporting agencies, name and address. Then your name, address, last four of your social. Don't need to put the whole social on one document. Don't ever do that. Then the date. Just click here when, when, when the form is up. Let me, let me do this right here. Select. Okay. When the form is up, click there. Choose a date. There you go. Then, hey, I am writing. This is in the first person, not in a, not in a corporate person. First person. And look at all the laws it gives. And then it says right here at the end. Therefore, I formally challenge the accuracy and the validity of the information on my credit report that does not meet these standards. I request that you promptly investigate and remove any such information from my credit report. Then I added some other information, okay, making it, you know, succinct. Now, there, there is one problem. I got to take care of it now. See, I don't want this being all the way over here, but you know what? I can't help that. I'm going to let it be. Let it be. Let it be. And we have a reset button. We have a save as button. I want to save this as this. We're going to call it public. Okay. P U B L I C. Public. B Lick. Man, I don't know who B Lick is, but he, he's, he's messing with the publics. And, and, and B Lick and publics, they, they just be kicking it together because they ain't got nothing better to do. So this is the public document. This is the print document. Watch this. Print. Come on, print. I just hit print see how it does print yay and then reset it resets the whole document 
See that right there? I added that for y'all. No, I did that for the company, okay? <laughs> so they can use the same document. All they have to do is save after each time. Ladies and gentlemen, the same thing works for you. Pay attention. Every single credit bureau gets this letter from you. Go after all of the aliases, all of the previous addresses. None of that junk. By the way, those data reporting agencies who's collecting your information, well, they don't have a right to collect your social security number or associate it with your social security number. Pay attention. Unless you directly give them that information. Unless you directly give them that information. Let's see right here. Oh, that's the title. I can't do this. Um, I can't do it with your name. So I got to change that your name thing. So y'all just got the bears with me. Bad news. <laughs> just got to bear with me. We'll take care of that. Um, we're going to just, I'm just going to name it as a complaining party. Okay. Because you're filing a complaint. This is a complaint, ladies and gentlemen. And notice, they're going to be like, what's this? And they're going to look at that. They're going to see down here and they're going to see what you're doing. And oh, they're going to be like, what the? Huh. Okay. I see. So they want to go there. And then ladies and gentlemen, each one of these violations, that's what you go and you sue them for. One or two at a time in small claims court. You're already letting them know we're going to take you to small claims court. Want to play with me? We're going to play back. Come on, y'all. Y'all want to play? I want to play. Chucky! Chucky! Yeah. Come here, homie. Tell them you said you were my friend, right? To the end? Oh, okay. See, I, I, I want to be like Chucky. Only in that sense that he wants to be a friend to the end. And he wants to play. Y'all want to play? Chucky wants to play. Let's go play, Chucky. They want to play. So I'm going to tell y'all to play. This is what I was talking about. That right there. See, that keeps moving because of editing features. So we're going to bring it back right there. Right, Only right there. Right there. Right there. Like, 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 like the way you do that right there. Okay. Whew. Now we're going to take care of this name thing. Name thing. Where's my properties at? Come on now. Properties. Wake up. Stop listening. Stop listening. He's so stupid. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be right back. Got to correct that before I put the video up. One second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the document is finished. I have to go ahead and do some amendments to make it so that you guys are able to fill in. When you go to this document, you will simply fill in your information to and from. You will get their information, and you will do this right here and just paste it in. In one spot, do the same thing. Put your information in here. It'll all fit. Put your last four of your social here. You're going to attach a copy of your credit report. Okay? Your social security number is private. That's why you don't have to reveal your social security number to anyone. Now, hold on one second. Got one more thing to do. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, two things to prove to you that social security numbers are private. I want you to pay attention to something. This is why they can't just get your information from anywhere and report it on any credit report without first verifying that it's your social security number. And the only way they can have your social security number is if they had permission to have it. You don't just give your social security number to anybody. You only give it to creditors, do you not? So where is a third party going to get it from? They can't. They don't have access to it. It's private, and nobody else can give it to anyone else. Pay attention. But By the way, the original creditor doesn't even have the authority to give it to whomever he sells the credit to without your permission. Now, in mortgages, you have that assignment thing where you agree that they can assign it to whomever, but nowhere in it does it say you are giving them permission to give your social security number. Only the promissory note. The promissory note does not have your social security number on it. Follow me now. Y'all need to pay attention. That's what happens when you've been doing this for a while. You can get around all their little stupid presumption. I told you I'm the presumption killer. So I want y'all to pay attention to 
ChatGPT. I'm going to let it play for a minute while I'm doing something in the background. We're going to share the experience. The social security number is considered a sensitive piece of personal information in the United States, primarily used for social security and tax purposes. Various laws have been enacted to protect the privacy of individuals' SSNs, restricting their use and disclosure. Here are five relevant laws and five case citations that reflect the legal landscape around the protection of social security numbers. Laws protecting social security numbers. One, Privacy Act of 1974, 5 U.S.C., 5552A. This act restricts how the federal government can disclose personal information, such as social security numbers. It mandates that government agencies must have a relevant and necessary reason to collect an individual's SSN and must also inform individuals how their SSN will be used. Two, Social Security Number Protection Act of 2010. This act specifically prohibits the printing of an individual's social security number on checks issued for payment by the federal government, as well as on any card required for accessing government services in order to reduce the risk of SSN theft. Number three, Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA. 20 U.S.C. Pressure 1232G, FERPA protects the privacy of student education records. It applies to all schools that receive funds under an applicable program of the U.S. Department of Education. Schools must have written permission from the parent or eligible student to release any information from a student's education record, which includes the social security number, except under certain legally specified circumstances. Four, Fair and Accurate Credit Transactions Act, FACTA, of 2003. Amends the Fair Credit Reporting Act to enhance the accuracy of reports and includes provisions to help reduce identity theft, such as the truncation of credit card and social security numbers on printed receipts. Five, Identity Theft and Assumption Deterrence Act of 1998, 18 U.S.C. CACA 1028. While not solely focused on SSNs, this act makes it a federal crime to knowingly use another person's identification with fraudulent intent, which includes the unauthorized use of someone's social security number. Case citations. Regarding social security number privacy one. In Zappos.com Inc. Customer Data Security Breach Litigation, 888F3D1020, 9th Sur, 2018. Although not exclusively about SSNs, this case dealt with the broader issue of personal information security including SSNs, in the context of a data breach. Two, Dovi Chao, 5 and 40 U.S., 614, 2004. This case addressed damages related to the unauthorized disclosure of an individual's social security number by the government, underscoring the privacy interests associated with SSNs. Basta V, American Hotel Register Co., 8 or 72 F, 3D, 801, 7, 2017. This case involved the issue of an employer's responsibility to protect employees, social security numbers, and the legal ramifications of failing to do so. Four, Robbins v. Lower Marion School District, 665 F 3D 524, 2011, sir. In this case, the court discussed the privacy implications of collecting and potentially disclosing student social security numbers without proper safeguards. Five, Remsburg v. DocuSearch, Inc., 149NH, 148, 2003, this New Hampshire Supreme Court case emphasized the duty of information brokers to exercise care in disclosing personal information, such as social security numbers, to third parties, highlighting the potential for harm from such disclosures. These laws and cases highlight the legal protections afforded to social security numbers and the serious considerations given to their privacy and security in various contexts including federal records, educational settings, and identity theft prevention. Ladies and gentlemen, the idea here is to let you know that this ain't no game, this ain't no joke. Uh, Rockham said it better than I could. Okay? This is me letting you know it's time for y'all to get some act right with these companies, these corporations. This is time for you guys to let them know what's what. Y'all ain't been letting them know. Y'all been letting them do whatever they want to do. Y'all got to stop letting them do whatever they want to do. They don't get to do whatever they want to do. I don't care what they say. Give me one second. I...
a little distracted because of everything that I've been doing. I've been doing a whole lot, y'all. Look at the time when I put y'all on pause and look at how much time is taken in between the pauses. Okay, this video right here, only 15 minutes, has taken over an hour almost to put together. That's for y'all. It ain't for me. I thought you said you were doing it for the company. I am doing it for the company. Stop talking. Ain't nobody told you to be interfering with... Sorry, they own vacation. Y'all y'all know how that works. They own vacation. Now, I got to make sure. This is the public one. Something ain't right. Hold on, y'all. It says public. I done saved public. Let's do the save as. Save as. Okay. Pacer does not report. We're going to save it there. Got to take care of that one. That's the first one. And we're going to save it as. We're going to do the public one. Pacer, Pacer. Pacer, well, we're going to do that one. This this is the, the one that I just had to scan back into the computer. And then we're going to save it as, and we got to go, we're going to go to downloads. And it ain't in downloads. It ain't downloads, so it's documents. Pacer, non-reporting document. Pacer does not report to the credit reporting agencies. That I already did that one. Then I don't know where the other one is. I need the public one. So give me a second. Got one more to do. Gonna save an IS, the public one. Save IS. Yeah, I don't know where I put it. Y'all just have to bear with me. So I don't I don't be doing this every day. I do this all day. Error day. Okay. Two two different things. Pacer, right there. There you go. The public one. Whew. So glad I did the public one last, y'all. So we're gonna take the public one. And we're going to put it here. And what I'm going to do, see this one right here? Uh-oh. I got to do, because this is the public one, and then save the tall three, I'm going to put it under both. Oof. I'm, I'm going to, because it's the public one, I have to put it under this one. Pacer does not report to the credit reporting bureau. So this one right here. All right, so I just, I got to put this one there. This one going to say, hey, you already got a copy here. You want to override it? And I'm going to do that right there. Do, how do you do that there? Ladies and gentlemen, I will put the link to the second one. The PACER does not report to the credit reporting bureaus. It will have what you all need. Because you have to pay attention. Because you have to send it to three different agencies, that's why you have the save as. When you do the first one, you save it. When you do the second one, Oh, and then you hit reset. Now, I wouldn't necessarily hit reset because it will clear all of the fields where you put information, the date, everything. It even clear your stuff. So I wouldn't hit reset. I just put the information in for the next party. And then I go back down and I'll hit save as. Okay. And then I'll open them up and then I'll hit print. I wouldn't do print right now until I saved it. Okay. Save it first, then do the print. Okay. All right. And remember, you're going to put your signature here. I would do the electronic signature, just type your name in, and then I would sign it by hand. Just that simple. Now, some of you are smart. Some of you know how to do notary presentment. I would also send this to the credit reporting bureaus with notary presentment. Now, I want you to understand something. I did not check any of these laws. Did not check any of them. Not a single one of these laws have I checked. I haven't locked the document. Normally, I lock these things. So y'all need to check. But it doesn't matter. We're going by principles. We're not going by whether or not. Now, I know, pay attention. I want you all to understand. I know that the Privacy Act of 1974 says this. It's also the act that says that you don't have to divulge your Social Security number to nobody. And you can't be penalized for not divulging it. That's what the act says. Some of y'all know about this stuff. All right. So we're going to put this supplemental information in there. All right. So now it's full page document. There you go. So ladies and gentlemen, most people you have to pay them to do stuff like this for you. Normally you would have to pay us, but I'm doing this as the Eon Foundation. I'm not doing this as a part of SACOM. I'm gonna donate it to SACOM, but again, I created this separately, which means it's my choice. Some of you are gonna understand the value of this document. Many of you won't. Look. Creating a document is not that hard. Creating a document that's going to have some weight, that's going to actually do something, now that's the thing that takes time. This document, as you can see from the first video until now, is what I've been working on. It's taken over 24 hours for me to do this. Okay? 
from the moment I went and opened that letter to see what Pacer was saying, yes, that's right. It was my letter that caused that Pacer letter to exist. Without my letter, they would never have responded to me this way. Short, simple, concise statements, and they had no idea that they were giving me exactly what I wanted. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. Let me tell y'all where the letter came from. Give me, get over here, envelope. It came from the Central Violations Bureau. Now, let me tell y'all who the Central Violations Bureau is because it ain't Pacer. The address on the letter was the Central Violations Bureau. Hold on, y'all. Let me get rid of that. And let, let's definitely get rid of that. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Who is the Central Violations Bureau? Question mark. Who? The Central Violations Bureau is a national center responsible for processing non-major misdemeanors and petty offenses citations for <laughs> on federal property. <laughs> okay, so what in the world is this petty offense misdemeanor violations of criminal acts sending letters to me for regarding PACER? Stop listening. Can, can somebody, can come, nobody can explain it to me? Because I, I, I can't explain it to myself. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the Central Violations Bureau. That's who sent it to me. From PACER. Now, when I say I ain't no joke, I ain't no joke. They knew what they were doing when they sent that to me from there. I didn't send it to the Central Violations Bureau. I sent it to PACER. So, again... Go after the credit reporting bureaus for reporting inaccurate information in your credit report. Everybody should see a bump in their credit as a result of this one letter. You ain't got to do all that back and forth. I told you, we're doing the one letter and done. They don't correct your credit. Don't argue back and forth with them. Well, we need more information. I'm sorry, you don't need any more information. If you need more information from me, that means you should have got more information from the other party. Oh, I'm sorry. If you guys read it, you'll see that in the letter we're asking. Where did they get the information from? Who gave them the aliases? Where did they get the information from? Since they claim that it's accurate. Now remember, they must report accurate and valid information. Accurate, let's look up the definition for accurate. We're gonna, we're gonna ask this chat GPT, one second. Wake up. What is the definition for accurate in a legal sense? Question mark. Stop listening. This is the last thing that we're going to be asking it, y'all. We ain't going to be asking it no more. Oh, God. Nobody asked for legal accuracy. I said, what is the definition for accurate? Why y'all do this? Stop it. Shut up. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. In a legal context, accurate generally refers to the quality or state of being correct, precise, or free from error. Uh -oh. This encompasses both factual correctness and completeness of the information uh -oh. representation in question. Uh oh. Accuracy in legal documents, evidence, testimony, and reporting is critical as it can significantly impact the outcomes of legal proceedings, the rights of individuals, and the administration of justice. Oh man, y'all need to find them laws that require them to provide accurate reporting, accurate validation, and accurate verification. Put a stop to all of the stupidity. Remember, they use words, you use words. Don't argue with them about the words. Say, no, that's the definition. You can't get around that definition. Do see do. Uh-uh, don't care. Toys R Us ain't putting on no more shows. They, they, they're out of business. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. There you go. I hope it's appreciated. Have a good day, everybody. Oh, like I said, I'm going to say it again. Ain't nobody going to do nothing like this for you. And don't ask you for nothing in return. You have not asked me, uh, had me ask you. Oh, no, no, don't forget to hit like. It really helps the algorithm. It, it'll help Google. Please, what the? I can give up. <clears throat> Excuse me. I apologize. You don't hear me hitting. Hit, 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 subscribe. I need subscribers. I need to get to 150 billion subscribers. 
You don't hear me doing any of that stupid stuff, ladies and gentlemen. That's not why I do this. I don't need more people watching my videos. I mean, I don't care if more people watch my videos. Okay? That's not how this works. Okay? If they want to watch, if they want to get the info get the information in, then let them get the information, let them take the information in. That's basically just how it is. All right. I got to go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it's appreciated. Don't don't email me. Don't text me. Talk about, oh, it's really appreciated. Man, you don't know how much I needed this. I had to go pay somebody to do this for me the last time. And they didn't even do all the stuff you're doing. They didn't even bring up all the points you're bringing up. I mean, you're bringing up stuff that nobody's brought up before. Even if they have brought it up, they haven't told anybody they were bringing it up. And they just kept it to themselves. You could have kept this information to yourself. You didn't have to tell anybody about any of this. You could have done it for your company and kept it internal. You did not have to tell us. And then you gave it to us for free without charging us. And all we had to do was sit through and listen to your antics and your stupidity and your dumb videos. Man, 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 you my homie. I don't need to hear any of that. Okay? Have a good day, everybody. It's Saturday. I got to go.